the arrest, arraignment, and remand of a top Nigerian politician and his wife by authorities in the United Kingdom earlier this week on charges of child trafficking and intention to illegally harvest human organ has refocused public attention on the inherent evils of the twin practice. Some people have gone to the extent of linking the act to the current rising spate of kidnappings and abductions all over the country. To try to get a better understanding of the issues involved here, we are now being joined by Julie Okadonli, a lawyer, former Director General, National Agency for Prevention of Trafficking in Persons, and Chairman, United Nations Voluntary Trust Fund for Victims of Trafficking in Persons, and Executive Chairman, Roos Foundation, an NGO focused on issues relating to human trafficking and sexual and gender-based violence. Good morning, Madam. Good to have you join us. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I, I, I know that the issue of the Ekerimadus, you know, has you know, brought to the fore again uh, this problem of human trafficking. But of course, you know that the dimension that this has brought uh, is the organ harvesting part of it. Uh, you have worked in institutions where these were major issues. How bad are these issues that we are dealing with? Uh, the number of Nigerians traveling to India, for example, is huge. And what we know is that so many people have been taken there, you know, um, by coercion without their consent. And organs have been harvested abroad, locally, etc. How are we dealing with this issue? Um, unfortunately, it's really bad. It's huge. Um, but the truth is that we have not really paid so much attention, attention. to organ harvesting. I'll tell you, like, we have so many cases where um, people were found with their organs ripped out, mm. but the authorities are quick to say it is a uh, ritual, ritual murders. There's nothing like ritual murders. Organ harvesting has been going on for so many years, undetected. Um, fortunately, NAPTIP has the mandate, yes. you know, to curb organ harvesting. But unfortunately, at the same time, you also have other law enforcement agencies that want to deal with it, whereas they do not have the capacity to deal with it because they don't have the training to deal with it. Mm. And so these issues are not even referred to NAPTIP for proper, you know, investigations and all of that. So we have that bottleneck there, mm. not allowing the appropriate agency to deal with, because this is a very specialized area, right. and rushing to the conclusion that it is ritual murder. Mm. You know, it's huge in the sense that even in countries like India, they actually steal your organ. You mm. go there for a procedure, maybe for um, a different procedure, yeah. and by the time you go they back, remove they remove something, they steal your organs, you know. So stealing organs has been something that's been going on, especially in the Middle Eastern countries. It's very common in all of these countries. And, you know, people call me, I run... Um, um, a, a kidney foundation okay. and people call me every day to say I want to sell my organ and I say no don't sell your organ donate it to a family that may need it you mm. know I always discourage them I say no I don't buy organs here you know this is not what we do here you know so people have begun to see this selling of organs as a way of life to make money forgetting that your lifestyle would change automatically and you will need much more than the money you get from selling your organs mm. to take care of the second organ, mm. otherwise it will fail. Mm. I mean, thank you, madam, for this explanation, but it's also important, you know, to put it on record because we premise this uh, with um, um, the situation with the Ekerimadus, but we need to also emphasize that they have not been proven guilty, you know, and they, you know, the case is still on, and of course, who knows whether, you know, uh, uh, they will come out, out of it without any. So the Kermadus are not guilty. It's just that the, you know, the, 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 the court will return by July the 7th. So we needed to put that on record Absolutely. so that we're clear, yeah, you know, right. about it. Mm -hmm. But that takes me to, I want to talk about, could you talk us through existing legislature and effective legislation in Nigeria around the concept of donor of um, organ donations here. Yeah. I mean, of course, we have the 2014 National Health Act, which a lot of people would argue there's some loopholes with. Mm. But let's let's get more a better education around this from you, please. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth that I do not really know much about the Health Act because I'm not in, a health practitioner. But I can tell you that when it comes to issues relating to organ trafficking or organ harvesting, there's a law in place which is the NAPTIP Act. Okay. But unfortunately, it has not really been tested. I'm not sure we've, gone, we've, we've prosecuted anyone 
for organ harvesting, like because I said, because of this um, interagency rivalry, not referring the cases to the proper authorities. I'll give you a, an example now. I, 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 I feel for the Equerimadus, you know, and um, I pray that the daughter is able to get um, a donor uh, for her transplant. But I can tell you that in a case like this, NAPTIP ought to have given them a clearance certificate to travel. Mm. But it looks like they're not even aware. There is a regulation. NAPTIP has the right to issue a clearance certificate to anyone who is going for anything relating to that. Anyone who is traveling for sports and things like that, because these are ways people are trafficked. So something like this, you know, is a case that they ought to have gone to NAPTIP to get a clearance certificate. Then NAPTIP would have been able to say, hey, wait a minute, can we interact with this would-be donor? Okay. NAPTIP would have been able to investigate further to know whether this guy, whether he's an adult or a, uh, or a minor, understands the impact or the consequences of what he's going for. That's very important. But unfortunately, this, is not, this did not happen because the immigration services would only give a passport based on the information they are given. Garbage in, garbage out. They are not going to look for information that they are not given. So if they say this boy is 50, they'll write 50 on the passport. So that's not their problem. So NAPTIP ought to have investigated, spoken to this guy, and given a clearance certificate. And if they have further questions, they would have, you know, if, if, if it flagged was, it. If it was brought to their attention. Absolutely, but it wasn't brought to their attention. But, but on, on that score, can you give us like a further, further understanding of the difference between donation of organ and exploitation? Ah, uh, good. Um, you know, I don't know, I, I'm not um, um, seized with the facts of this particular, of this matter. particular yeah. matter. But I know that in organ harvesting, some victims are deceived mm. or coerced, especially when they are under the control of the perpetrator. So in this case, I do not know if this guy knew that this is what he was going to do or if he was promised a better life. In the event that he's an adult, but mm. not conceding to it, because we do not know what the facts are. Mm. So I do not know if he was aware that this is what he was going to do. And then on getting there, it was something else, because that's what usually happens with human trafficking. Yeah. When these girls are promised better life and jobs, and, and they Europe. get there and they say, hey, you know what? You're going to be a prostitute. And they say, no, this is not what I... So that is it. That is where trafficking comes in. If he was not aware that he was going to be given his organ. And on getting there, he panicked and took off. I do not know if that was what happened. But if that is the case, then of course, that's the case of is, organ is harvesting. Is it possible to have given his consent, but then turn around at the last minute, just like she said, maybe he panicked, you know, but uh, if that is what has happened, how does the law or the NAPTIP Act deal with somebody who has expressly given his consent, you know, went through um all the protocols in procuring visa passport etc but then turn around it know. is possible for you to give your consent and change your mind you have a right to change your mind at any mm. any time and this is what the british authorities will be investigating okay. you know unfortunately if naptip was in the no ab initio they would have had a joint operation, joint investigations, which would have made life a lot easier because the whole of this thing started from Nigeria right. and ended up in the UK. Mm. But NAPTIP now is blinded because they had no, they're not even aware that this had happened because he wasn't given a clearance certificate. So now I believe that the British authorities will do a very diligent investigation mm. and, you know, come up with their findings. They will find out if it was a case of the guy just panicking and running away or the guy not knowing what he was going for. Because before you even donate your kidneys, yeah. you should go through a proper medical test and a psychological test as well. I don't know. And, and then the blood thing to determine if it will match. Yes. Uh, because I don't suppose that it is when you get to... Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I'm, 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 a bit, I'm a bit surprised because my mom, okay. you know, had a kidney transplant. And it was in Nigeria, in India. Back in the days, they were not doing it in Nigeria, unlike now. So she was referred to India. So it was my brother that donated, that donated because he was a perfect match. Okay. And that test, compatibility test, was done in Nigeria. 
Oh. Before he went, he didn't go to uh, India to find out if, if he it was, was a match. Mm. Exactly. So I'm surprised that this guy would have to go to England to find out if he was a match. And if it's not a match, what happens? You bring someone else and someone else and someone else. Because it's not easy to get a match. Mm. Most of the time, it is better to use a family member because it's likely that it would work. But if the person is not a family member, then it may fail. You know, so it's always even, advisable. Even if they were in March. Yes. So it's very advisable to, you know, use a family member, a close family member, all how, the time. How, how reliable are the um, finding procedures to determine if there's a match and then the transplant that you said? Because a lot of people are not aware that they can actually carry out successful organ transplants oh, in Nigeria. So many organ transplants, especially kidney transplants, have been carried out in Nigeria. There's a hospital called Zenith medical i'm not i'm not advertising for mm -hmm. him mm -hmm. but there are so many hospitals like that even in teaching hospitals ibadon and other hospitals like you that see. yeah they carry out um, kidney transplants easily so many i don't know the numbers but it's it, it happens in nigeria it's every day low level of awareness about this yeah um, as, apparently, as we can gain. apparently. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure there's a low level because um if you want to carry out a procedure the yes. first thing to do would be to do some research. research. Mm. So I believe that those who go abroad prefer to get their procedures done abroad. But they cannot say, because the first area, I mean, for, if, for example, if you live in Nigeria, you go to the hospital in Nigeria and the mm. doctor tells you your kidneys have failed. The doctors will tell you these are the options. In Nigeria, we have 10 hospitals who carry out transplants. Or you want to go abroad, then I refer you here. So there's no way people with that condition would not know that there are yeah. opportunities or there are procedures to be done in Nigeria. Yeah, you make a point yeah. there. Mm. Let's talk about the status quo on a national registry for organ do donations in Nigeria because that's another area that's a little blurred. What, what are the facts around that? I'm not sure we have something like that in Nigeria. <laughs> and I think we should have something like that in mm. Nigeria because it makes life a lot easier. You know, there's so many people who are even willing to donate organs for free you know, without seeing it as business. Some people see it as business now. They want to sell one organ, forgetting that the, the stress on the second organ, if you don't have change, change your lifestyle or you don't have money, is going to impact on you sooner than later, and they will end up not enjoying the money. So we need to have that. It, it will help us a lot. We don't That's have that. That's a very that. interesting point you just raised around monetization. Because, of course, that's supposed to be tagged a crime. In certain climes, I would expect here in as the well. UK, geez, clearly. Absolutely. Yes. So, I mean, of course, you have some people who are donors and are, in fact, financially motivated to donate. Yeah, um, you know, it, it's, it's difficult, especially if um, you're not a family member, to just come and donate your kidney. So, some people have now seen it as a way of business. You know, I donate one kidney, I make enough money to start my business and things like that. To me, it's a crime, you know, and, and should be discouraged. But the truth is that it's also difficult sometimes to get a family member donate one of the organs. It's a very difficult, very, very difficult situation. And abroad, where you have the waiting list is so long, it's long. it takes very... between three to five years. And sometimes the patients die mm. while waiting. You know, so that waiting list again is very discouraging, discourages a lot of people, you know, from wanting to go through the right process. And that's why there's a lot of black markets involved yeah. in this transplants there's so much black markets going on you know and those who are supposed to be, be like compliant are the ones who really break this law you know they go behind and get these things done in the black market because from, from, waiting sometimes can be very costly mm, from your experience with napti how easy is it to get a willing donor outside of family members you know especially if the motivation is not financial reward not my experience with napti but my experience generally okay. it is not easy to get a willing donor it's very difficult for someone to come and say okay i won't volunteer my kidney to you i remember when my mom you know was diagnosed of um, acute renal failure the family members were not ready mm. it was my brother who said i will give it to you and my dad was like no you can't do that you know and he said i will give it to my mother but unfortunately at the time it was 50 50. technology was not this advanced so it was a 50 50 chance they gave her and unfortunately it failed despite the fact that it came from her son you know and then she continued with dialysis and you know complications here and there until she finally you know um, passed
so it, it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult for you and you to give up your one of your organs willingly because you're thinking, ah, what if I give out one kidney and later something happens to the other kidney? And then for a woman, she will say, no, you know, I want to have children. What if it will affect, you know, so it, it's very, very tricky. It's very difficult. What does science say about donors in terms of how long they live after, you know, donating? What, what are your chances of a long life and healthy life? Like I said, you have to change your lifestyle, your eating habits, your drinking habits, your exercise. So you must, you must live a very healthy life mm. for you to keep that one kidney working very well. It is possible to live very long, you know, if you have a second healthy kidney. But then you may not even know if the second kidney is healthy or mm. if the second kidney may, be, may develop uh, complications. Uh, complications, you know, as time goes on. So it, it, it's, 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 it's a very tricky situation. If you're lucky, like my brother is, um, the kidney transplant was done over 31 years ago, oh. and he's lived with, on one kidney. But unfortunately, he has developed the high blood pressure, which, are, which is one of the complications. You may develop high blood pressure, and the high blood, blood pressure is what usually leads to kidney failure if it is not well managed. You know, and then you may start finding some traces of, of protein in your urine as time goes on, mm. you know, because there's so much stress on one kidney and you don't have a spare kidney. So all of these things, but with a healthy lifestyle, you can live long. I would imagine that a healthy lifestyle is also a basic prerequisite for even being a pre before you even donate to start with, because Absolutely. a lot of people don't understand what is, if I decided I want to donate my, my kidney to my mother tomorrow, what will they be looking for in me to be, to, to yeah, qualify? I mean, I mean, before a doctor would take a kidney off anyone, he would have already known if it's healthy or not. A doctor would mm. not waste his time taking an unhealthy kidney. Someone may be smoking, drinking, living a very rough lifestyle. The kidneys will not be that healthy, even though they are not yet deceased. Yeah. So, I mean, a doctor would not take you know, a, a kidney that is not healthy from anyone. Those are some of the tests mm. that are carried out before um, a kidney is taken off anyone. Well, one of the um, revelations coming out of the you know, issue of the Kremados is the fact that the, the possibility of the Attorney General of, the, of Britain uh, deciding on jurisdiction because uh, the, the boy, the, the boy man or the boy guy, you know, is from Nigeria, you know, um, everybody involved are from Nigeria. If we end up with the possibility of transferring, we don't know, we don't know yet transferring the case to Nigeria, what are the chances of the Ekremadus in terms of the law been, you know, uh, protecting them if they have not broken any law as such? And how can the NAPTIP at that point come in? Again, I do not know what the facts of this case is. If I did, I would have been able to tell you right away. But what I would say is that the case should be referred to NAPTIP to okay. carry out the fresh investigations. If, even at this point? Yes, all be, over again. Okay. They, can, they can carry out their own investigations, come out with a finding. If they are guilty, the law will take its course. This will be their first case. Yeah. If they are not guilty, then of course, they'll, they'll let them go. Um, like I said, if NAPTIP was involved ab initio, then they would have had a joint investigation with the British authorities because Nigeria and Britain are signatories to the Palermo Protocol. That's right. You know, and so they can try this case jointly, okay. you know, if they wish to. You know, so um, let's see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that, that's yeah. all we can, you know, uh, yeah. pray for July uh, right. 7th. Yeah. It's yeah. almost, it's almost yeah. here. Uh, well, lastly, in terms of legislation, do you, where do you think that Nigeria should be headed in terms of, you know, trafficking people, I mean, in particular for organ harvesting. There was a gentleman, you know, uh, an investigative journalist who did a major story a couple of years ago, you know, about the fact that a certain death that occurred in a Bom state, you know, could have been directly linked to organ harvesting. You know, and you refer to that sort of a thing that people would just think that yeah. it's ritual murder, Absolutely. whereas it is harvest organ harvesting. Where should we be headed in terms of appropriate legislation. Honestly, we have the legislation with the NAPTIP Act. The problem is implementation. Mm. You know, I mean, like I said, if 
Some agencies will not allow the agency that is mandated to fight this crime to do their jobs. Mm. We we'll continue to have this problem. The laws are there. The laws are there. Implementation is a major problem. And I hope with this case, NAPTIP will take charge and know that they are in charge of issues relating to organ harvesting and work closely with other agencies to ensure that cases like this are referred back to them for proper diligent prosecution and investigation. Thank Hopefully you so much. Hopefully the, the public is also better sensitized with everything Absolutely. you've just said because yeah. a lot of yeah. the lack of knowledge mm. is also a big issue. Mm. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, for Madam, us. for joining us and, and thanks for the very beautiful, you know, clarifications and uh, enlightenment on what is happening. Thank, Thank you for you. having me. My pleasure.